Hey everyone and welcome to another Inner Sterling Modeler. This is now the final review of the Space 1999 Eagle Kit. It was originally produced by MPC and re-released by Round 2. So that being said, the model is exactly the same as it was available in the late 70s and early 80s. And there are quite a few inaccuracies with this kit and my goal here was to try to address some of those. So just in case you haven't viewed any of the previous videos about this build, let me just kind of quickly summarize the modifications that I've made here. The first of which was to address uh, the front and aft modules that you see here. Um, these modules are supposed to be hollow in a sense that you're supposed to be able to see through these uh, cages, if you will. These triangular areas are all filled in with plastic. So I drilled those out and provided some interior detailing. Another modification I made was to the landing pads. Let me just kind of show you here with this flashlight. So the first thing to do was to add this elbow joint here. So if you look at the original studio model, there is an elbow joint that basically bends as the model lands. And uh, so I added that there. There's uh, no joint that's uh, included in this model kit. It's just a single post that connects the pad to the landing pod. Also right above that is uh, some another modification that I made here that uh, utilized styrene rods uh, with this section here. If you watch the video that uh, has been posted previous to this one, you'll see uh, that in detail. And moving towards the rear of the ship here, um, the engine tanks here were modified with more uh, piping and um, tubes here that were added. And moving to the rear of the ship, I added these baffles in each of the engines as well. The model was painted in a matte white by Tamiya. Uh, the red stripes are painted with Vallejo's scarlet red. I used a light gray by Vallejo for the landing pads. And for the exhaust bells here, I used uh, Tamiya's gloss aluminum. And they were also coated with a pearl finish by Tamiya. I used pastels to darken them up a little bit, just to give them a little weathering. And um, I added some paneling here. That's where you see these gray little panels uh, all along the model surface here. And that was done with pastels. So the one difference that this kit has versus the one that was available earlier on is that it comes with a decal sheet that provides new markings for the ship and allows us to uh, at least make the model a little more accurate in terms of the markings. So for example, these uh, orange rectangular uh, markings here as well as the black dots that you see scattered around were provided on the sheet. Markings for the um, engine tanks here as well. And I also like the fact that they now include these decals for the, uh, that uh, represent the astronauts that sit within the command module. The command module, by the way, was also modified uh, with lights, as you can see there. And so they're lit up by 3 millimeter warm LED lights, and that is powered by a 2032 coin size battery. And I'm happy to say it turned out nice because it's all self-contained here. Uh, there's enough tension to be able to slip this off and put it back on here uh, to access the battery, which is just a, uh, a push switch, and it all fits into this anterior module here. Now this is the underside of the model, and one of the things I'm giving uh, round two a lot of credit for is this decal sheet they provided, because uh, the model, of course, is lacking some detail, and uh, these decals are printed in a unique way with shading and shadows there. It's a great way to simulate detail. The stand that you see here I created um, I will be producing a video that will show you how I did this, but essentially it was a stand made from a um, desk organizer, believe it or not. Uh, but it's a rectangular piece of plastic here that I painted black, added some LEDs. Uh, these are all cool white 3mm LEDs around the perimeter. And then the orange um, landing pad there was uh, done with just a styrene piece of plastic and I use uh, pastels and uh, masking tape to create all the geometric uh, patterns that you see there. Let me just take the model off here just to show you what that looks like here without it on. And uh, I utilized some pictures that I saw on the internet from the original TV show uh, that gave me at least a pattern to go for here with all these markings. So I would say that overall the model uh, represents a a decent replica of the ship, if you uh, are not too nitpicky about the inaccuracies there. It really does look like uh, an, an eagle from the uh, TV show. Um, I think it looks better once you've modified these sorts of things, but um, you know, overall it makes a good representation. And then just kind of go around the opposite side here, just to show you this side as well. Um, I'd say the one thing that I was disappointed with was how the um, um, cages kind of turned out here. I mean, they're nice that you can see through them, but um, 
I would recommend hollowing them out, at least trying it anyway, in a different way. Uh, someone left a suggestion on my YouTube channel about doing that, and basically what he suggested do was to take a um, Dremel um, uh, grinding stone that uh, is kind of like an arrowhead. If you have a Dremel, you know what I'm talking about. And you basically use that from the inside now to grind away at the plastic that's inside uh, that fills each of these triangular areas. And you make them thin enough so that it makes it much easier to cut away with an X-Acto knife. And that way you're not having to file, uh, which is why uh, some of these um, bars here came out kind of jagged. Um, I tried my best to smooth them out, but apparently if you do it this way, um, you'll at least retain the roundness of uh, each of those rods there. So you should try it out. If you look at one of my videos, I believe it is part one. Um, if you scroll down to the comments, you'll see uh, a, uh, a gentleman had put that suggestion on there, and um, he provided me some pictures, and sure enough, it actually looked pretty good. Um, and that's the way he approached the issue. And the baffles, by the way, that fill the bells here, um, I got those off the internet from a guy who goes by SciHighModels.com, and um, he uh, can be found on eBay as well as just going to his site directly. Um, he also provides other pieces that you can add to this eagle, including a laser gun that sits right here, and also a staircase that you can put up to your eagle there, um, just as an added accessory. I can say overall I'm fairly happy with the way the kit turned out. Uh, I just kind of wish there were a few things that turned out a little bit better, but uh, for the most part I'm pretty satisfied with the way the lighting turned out. Um, and the stand itself um, adds to the model kit too. This is something that I kind of envisioned. I wasn't quite sure how it was going to turn out. Uh, but I will actually um, post a short video on how I put that together, just in case you want to get some hints on how to do that for your own model kit. And uh, that pretty much wraps it up here. Okay, so let me just go ahead and spend a minute giving you my rating for this model. In terms of accuracy, I would have to give the model kit a 2 because it is still just as inaccurate as it always has been. However, if you look at likability, I give this model a 4, and one of the reasons why is because I had to modify it so much. So without the inaccuracies, I wouldn't have had the ability, or at least the um, opportunity to, uh, to modify it. So kind of a double-edged sword there. Um, in terms of ease of assembly, this is a fairly uh, straightforward model to put together. Uh, I really didn't run across too many major issues with it. Uh, there was one issue that did come up, which I'll point out in just a second. Um, and in terms of affordability, I'd give it a single dollar sign because it is fairly affordable. Really, you can find this model for under $30. And with regards to that one issue I was just telling you about here, uh, the one difficulty I did have with assembly was slipping this uh, cargo pod into the center here. Um, it was really, really tight. It was hardly, actually there was um, uh, insufficient room for it. So you can see there are these pegs here that are on these modules here, and I had to grind down uh, some of the pegs here on the back side in order to slip it into place. So although this cargo pod is supposed to be detachable, there's no way I'm taking it off. It's just going to stay just like that. All right, guys, that pretty much does it for this project. If you have any questions about this build, you can email me at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com or contact me on my YouTube channel. It's funny, as I'm viewing this video here uh, through the screen of the camera, I'm noticing all this lens flare like it's a J.J. Abrams effect. I'm not sure what's causing that. Uh, but anyway, I just want to mention that I might be taking a little break from model building. Um, I have other hobbies that I do too, including photography, so I'm going to be spending some time doing that. Um, a, couple, a couple other projects that are down the line include the ship from the movie Oblivion. I received that for Christmas. I also have a Boba Fett helmet that I'm going to be detailing uh, for my son. And of course the Johnny Quest plane, which I'm anticipating. Uh, hopefully that will come out soon as well. And so thanks for watching. I always appreciate you guys checking in. And take care. I'll see you in the next one.